Well, let's talk about the heat wave and our power grid. It begs the question, how can we prepare for more intense and longer heat waves in the future? We're joined now by Elliot Mantenzier, Cal IOS, ISO, rather CEO, to talk more about this. So thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate it. Um, let's dive into some of the numbers here. Out of all the major U.S. outages since 2000, 80 percent have been because of extreme weather. We keep talking about that the weather just keeps getting more and more extreme. So what's being done to prevent this from happening in the future? No, that's exactly right. We're seeing it during the summer. We've also been seeing it in certain parts of the country in the winter. Here in California, probably first and foremost, the effort has been to bring a significant amount of new energy producing resources onto the electricity grid to make sure that when we get into these kind of really high temperatures, the overall system can maintain its reliability. And just think about a couple of years ago in September of 2022, when our grid was right at the edge, just in the last two years, we've increased the power supply by about 20%. And over the course of the last few days, while there certainly were some very challenging local outages in California and Southern California, and we've seen that, we know the utilities are working very hard. The aggregate power system has held up well, and we have not had to offer any calls for voluntary conservation. So bringing on new resources and coordinating the system and being ready for extreme events is central to our strategy. Yeah, and Elia, according to the American Society of Civil Engineers, some components of the nation's grid, they're over a century old. Oof. That's 50 years past life expectancy. Tell us about the case in California. Um, if so, what's being done to repair the grid? Because if we're seeing power outages so frequently now, it's only going to yeah. get worse. No, it's a very good question. And certainly at the local level, the local distribution utilities are investing significantly, both in increasing the capacity of their systems and hardening them against wildfires, which we know has been a major issue here in California. Again, for us at, at the California ISO, our responsibility is sort of planning out the overall highway system of transmission grid for California. And again, a significant multi-billion dollar, 20-year investment in new infrastructure to make sure that we can deliver all the new clean energy resources that are coming on the grid to the customers who need them. So a lot investment and a lot of focus. That's we're showing video, of course, of solar panels being installed on homes. Are we also talking wind energy? Um, you know, and how, how do these clean energy sources, how can they kind of help avoid these blackouts in the future? Yeah. So in the last couple of years, the focus in California has been a significant build out of solar energy and batteries. And batteries. So okay. It's made a huge difference in maintaining reliability just in the last few days during this very, very extreme heat wave in Southern California, those batteries have been absorbing extra solar energy Did during the middle heat of the waves? day and then re-injecting it back into the grid hmm. during sunset and after hours. And that's made a major difference in our ability to keep lights on. So continuing to invest in energy storage, other clean energy resources, and making sure that our power system, our transmission system are as well maintained as possible. Those are key parts. And then working with the governor's office, the state agencies, and the utilities, really improving coordination and planning so that when we get into these type of events, we can make sure that the bulk grid is as ready as possible to move electricity to where it's most needed. All right. Well, it's definitely a challenge for sure. Elliot, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you being here. My pleasure. Thank you.